All right. This is number seven. So we have. So things we know. They tell us those are medians. So things that we have to automatically know with medians is this is two thirds, one third, two thirds, one third. So RP, so this distance here is 2y minus x, yes? And then TP, TP, this one here is 2y. And then PM, and PN. Okay, so we want to find x and y, solve x for x and y. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I know that this entire distance here, if I add those two together, I'm going to get uh, what? 3y minus x minus 2. Is that okay? <clears throat> but then <clears throat> things that I have to know. I know that this distance here is two thirds of the whole distance. And I know that this has to be one third the distance. What well, can I multiply everything by to clear the denominators? Three. Three. And distribute the 2 here. Distribute the 1. Is that all right so far? I think if I bring all the x and y values to the left side and the constants, so the numbers that aren't associated to the right side, that should work. So if I, I have 5y, so if I bring that over here, I would get 4y over here. Agree? And if I were to add 2x, I would have negative x over here. Is that okay? And then if I add this 6, bring it over there, I get to the here. Okay, all that for that one equation. Are we okay so far? So let's go to the other, <coughs> the other line. So this one. So that line, if I add this plus this, I'm going to get uh, 2y plus x plus 2. Right? So that's that whole distance. This distance is two thirds the distance. So two thirds of, y, of 2y plus this distance is one third of that. Who bailed? Or did our guest make it? Oh, yeah, she's here. Sorry. I thought she was bringing ice cream and cupcakes. No. It was going to be like the best day ever. <laughs> All right. Uh, two thirds. So I'm going to multiply everything by three. So this is going to become four y. This is going to become x plus two. This is going to become six y plus three x plus six. Is that okay? I'm going to bring the x and y to the left side. Put the constant on the other side. So I'm going to subtract three x. So I get negative two x over here. I'm going to subtract six y and I get negative two y over here. I'm going to subtract. Uh, 2, bring it over there. So here's my two equations. What should I do with those two equations at this point? If I add them together, does anything cancel out? Uh-uh. So I can do one of two things. I think I should say that I'm going to multiply this whole one by 2. So let's bring this one down as is. Multiply everything there by 2. So that's going to give me what? That negative 4x minus 4y equals, equals 8. Is that right? Add those together. So that's what? Negative 5x 
that cancels equals 12. So x equals, ew, is this really the answer? Who's the big jerk gave this question? Is that what the answer says in the back? No. What does the answer say in the back? Four. Four? Four? Dude, did I make an error? Maybe you just stick with the first one. I think it's four. It was just so goofy. Huh. I don't know. Well, tell you, yeah. I don't know where I made an error. Anyone uh, see it? Ah, that's four Wait, lines. could you set them equal to each other? Because yeah. no, they're not equal to each other. Yes, it is. The the that uh, equals four, and that also equals four. Oh, I see. What you, I thought you mean in the medians. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But maybe well, that would give me this. Yeah. Oh, you use what are you on? Are you on? Are you on? Can you use calligraphy pen? No. Use magic pen that vanishes? No. No, it's calligraphy. I don't care. Yeah, Johnny. Are you supposed to title the negative x plus 4y equals 4 by 2, too? Hang on. Um, well, I was choosing to get rid of the y. So I wanted that to become minus 4y. But I could have done your way, multiply this by negative 2, and it still would have been the same result. So I got an ugly answer. I don't know. You said 4 is the answer? Shoot. I'm off. <laughs> but you guys are used to that, aren't you? All right. What other questions? I, so I'm going to put a question mark why our answer is so far off. I'll have to double check the answer key. Yeah. Um, number eight. Number eight. D, C, B, I. All right. A, C is the median. Good. It cuts it in half. C, D is... So this distance here is 15 plus 6x, and dA is, ew, that's 8x plus 8, and bc, that right there, is 4x plus 25, and ab is 12x minus 5. Find the perimeter. Oh, my. Okay. So it says find the perimeter. So if we find the perimeter, we have to solve for x somehow. If I add everything up, that still has x involved. Agreed? Yo. Uh, I forgot. Let's go with it. Yeah. I like it. That's what I was thinking. You know that because this is the median, this and this segment have to be equal. So I could state this. Equals 4x plus 25. Subtract 4x, I get 2x. Subtract that, I get 10. So x equals 5. So now we know what x is equal to. So then we can plug x in here. So this is going to give me, it looks like 48. This is going to give me 55. No? That's right. Okay. This here is going to give me 45. 45. And this here is going to give me uh, 45. 45 as well. Good. So that's 90. So I know if I go 48 plus 55 plus 90, that'll give me the perimeter. 193. 193? Sounds good. What else do we got? Yeah. Yeah. 10? Uh, kind of. So if you prove the triangle that's here, can you say that's actually the median? Yeah. C, 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 C. 
I'd have, is it on this one? Yeah. Okay, we'll see what you're saying here in a sec. All right, so our given tells us that angle tells us that angle and this is given and given. So this is congruent to this. I like that. Um, and then TR bisects angle STA. Okay. So knowing this, this one's going to allow me to state that ST is congruent to AT, and that's just our diagram. We have base angles, therefore we know these. That's going to work. So that gives me this. And then they tell us the uh, TR bisects the angle, STA. So if it bisects the angle, that means that angle STR has to be congruent to angle STR, ATR. And so that definition of bisector I do have enough to prove these triangles are congruent by angle side angle I don't have to do the reflexive property but you know if you chose to do it great if not I'm going to say that triangle STR is congruent to triangle ATR because we have angle side angle and then TR is a median, is that what we're saying? So then I'm going to say that SR is congruent to RA, and that's CPCTC. So if that's the case, then I can state what? So by doing this, we could say that R is midpoint of SA um, congruent segments or midpoint, no, I can't say midpoint, I say congruent segments probably. Now that we already knew that because of CPCTC and then that would allow us to state that TR is median of SA um, definition of midpoint. That's where I'd go with that one. Yeah. 11. Ooh. We have angle ear. All right. Okay, so if that's the first given, so if this is the median of this triangle here, that would allow us to state that TH is congruent to H, okay? Uh, definition of median or midpoint. Okay, so that's going to tell us this. This segment's congruent to that segment. Well, I can state right there. An angle ETR. 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 So this whole angle is congruent to 
this whole angle. U. What else do we know? TA is the bisector. Fresh Egg Boy, Sunshine, Buttercup. Uh, that's my nice way of kind of giving a warning to the back corner. <laughs> Don's acting all innocent. No, I'm not involved in this. He's the one handing matches out to everybody. Here, let's play with matches. Right, Don? Huh? <laughs> All right. Um, so TA is the bisector of here. Okay. So that's going to allow us to state this angle, this angle we're congruent, this angle, and this angle we're congruent. Um, so we can say that angle three is congruent to angle four. And angle one is congruent to angle two. And definition of angle bisector. Yeah, what happened? Yeah. Hey! You want to finish the problem for me? Uh, yeah. Well, we can help. Hey, man, it's okay. We're all ready to go. Um, okay. <laughs> I didn't mean to ignore you, I promise. All right. Um, e A or E A H. So I just want. I'm going to write what we're trying for. We're trying for this triangle here. R T H. We're trying to prove these triangles are congruent. Um. Oh, we could do that. What is going on back there? Sawyer. No, I Sawyer. No, I went to the trash. I was throwing through. I was pretty sad. I went to throw someone in the trash. Now you're a victim, right? Okay, I get it. I'm getting a fish here. All right. All right. So, right now, I have an angle and a side. I have an angle and a side. Can I say that this angle is congruent to this angle? Yeah. Why? Vertical. Yeah, baby. All right, so I know that angle T H R, I think that's an H in the middle, is that right? Is congruent T H R and E H A. And those are vertical angles. So now I have angle side angle, so I can go ahead and state that those two triangles are congruent to each other because of angle side angle. Can you just write that when you're when we're writing the question what triangle should we choose triangle? I just can't remember what triangle they said. I'm sorry. T H R just for you. E H A angle side angle. Anything else? We happy, sad, indifferent? Sad. All right. Can you do 15? 14, 15? <gasps> Let me see. 14. 14 and 15. All right, all right. Uh, I will not give you either of those on a test. Can we get if I do, I will work it out for you. Okay. Okay. Deal? Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's get notes out from last time. Okay. 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 I know we had started these, right? All right. Um, I know I passed this, but I probably should bring out that. Supplementary and congruent mean right angles. So if I have supplementary and right angles, they have to be. I don't know what I'm going to put in here. If we can after this, 
if if two angles oh if oh, oh, Scott. are both and then they must be if two angles are both congruent and supplementary, then they, they must be congruent angles. Or they must be, no, they must be, nope, right angles. Right, ah, right angles, sorry. Right angles. Okay, so that was yesterday, later, sometime. Got it? We did that, yes? Yep. Thank goodness. How do you find the area of a triangle? What is, yeah, so it's area is equal to one half base times height. What do you know about the base and the height? What are they always to each other? Yeah, so base is perpendicular to the height. Is, is the height always one of the sides of a triangle? No. no. Okay, it doesn't have to be. So the height of this particular triangle here is right here. The height of this one's right here. Okay, so the height does not have to be one of the sides. The height's sometimes called the altitude. Oh, I'm going to give my neighbor a hard time again today. Yeah, Dave Aguilera. He's the weather guy. He used to work. No, no, no. That's not his dog. Or his wife or cousin or anything. No, I, I just, he's the weather guy. I, I always give him a hard time going, dude, isn't it awesome that you can always be wrong about your job and you still get paid? <laughs> All right. All right, let's take a look at this. What's this thing going to do? I haven't even looked at this yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Something exciting is happening. Oh, my goodness. Three. Yeah, I guess oh, I should. Oh, no, you do actually. All right. Shh. That must be true because it's on a math website. All right. That's true. I'm with you. It's a rectangle, but good job on this shape. All right. An altitude is a line which passes through the vertex of a triangle and meets the opposite side at right angles. A triangle has three altitudes, for more of the C altitudes of a triangle. An interesting fact is all three altitudes always pass through a common point called the orthocenter of a triangle. So the orthocenter, I will tell you, is different than the centroid. The length of the perpendicular from the side to a triangle to the opposite vertex, this is often calculated to find the area of the triangle. Sweet. I'm glad that we found out about Obama eliminates. Not at all! What? Uh, so, so, we have a new center. It's called the orthocenter. The orthocenter is not the same thing as the centroid. The centroid is the center of mass always. The Ortho center is not the center of mass. It doesn't have to be. But they will all they will all cross at the same spot. Destroy that. All right. Altitude. Ortho center. Okay, let's see. Is this here? No. No. Okay, so the altitude is how tall. Ortho center is where all altitudes meet. 
Okay? The ortho center does not need to be inside the triangle at all. It can be, it doesn't have to be. It can also fall onto one of the sides. So again, the ortho center is a little bit different. I don't have any cool information about the ortho center versus the centroid. I think the centroid is pretty cool because it's the center of mass. It's how things spin around. The ortho center doesn't work that way. Yeah. So you have three different sides. So take your triangle, turn it this way, turn it this way. That's all. That's really what all comes to. All right. All right. Construct all altitudes for the triangle. Uh, really. Yeah, we won't get them done. But you know what I mean. All right. So. Does that seem okay? Now, if I turn this triangle sideways, <laughs> let's just pretend that's 90 degrees. And then if I shoot. All right, hang on. I got they got to make it prettier. Okay. Let's undo that, too. I'm going to pull this. I'm just going to get myself in trouble, I know. But just do. No, not quite. Okay. I want this. I want that. Oh, yeah. Now we're in business. Okay. Now. But you can use the lines. I don't want to use the lines. Thank you. Small ruler. There we go. Is that his gum? <laughs> <laughs> Chair made noise. <laughs> but your butt wasn't sitting on it when it made noise, so I feel pretty good about the noise it made. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, that was hateful. I should have Okay. Woo, there's one. Sawyer's fault. All the altitudes for the triangle. Jeez oh, Louise. Okay, I will tell you that the construction of the altitudes of a triangle. How would we do that? Now I just want you to think about this. How would I construct the altitudes of a triangle? The altitude does not cut the segment into two equal parts. 
The altitude does not count the cut the angle into two equal parts. It makes a perpendicular to the side. So I'm not quite sure. I, yeah, go ahead. Would it be like you measure the height of it and then you find out that it's a certain point or just all of the ends of the segments arrive at Uh, I, so things that I know how to do, I do have a cut, the protractor. I like that idea. I'm just trying to think about the construction itself. We have an angle bisector. I know how to make a perpendicular through a point, but I don't necessarily know how to make it, the perpendicular go through the opposite vertex that's off there. Hang on, would that be... Oh, I think I got it. All right. Okay. You guys trust me for a minute? No. Good. It's the right answer. So the orange, I just extended my line. So this is going to allow me to say, here's a point, here's a point. Still with me? OK. I'm going to close this a little bit. Over here. What is going on? There is nonstop laughing. What are you doing? Swinging arcs. Mm. All right. Oh my gosh! Are you kidding me? All right. So, Sawyer, so I blame you for this. I do it. I can't for you. What about Doctor Phil? Ah, come on! Oh my gosh! It's a little too much. Well, the nice thing is, this is the right triangle. So right here should be the median of it, which should have done this, I think. So I probably just should have shown that, yeah, swung that out too. That's ugly. I'm just, hey, look over there. Someone coming in the door. Um, <laughs> which type of triangle have we not drawn altitudes for? I don't know. Let's see. Note. You may need to extend one or more of the sides of a triangle to show all three altitudes of an obtuse triangle. Okay, so I was trying to mimic that on the last sneeze. Woo! Bless you. Hey, thanks guys, everybody. Um, so, sometimes you'll have to extend the lines that aren't actually part of it. I don't know if I will have you construct these, but we're moving on. Okay, I'm moving on. Okay, so, which of why give the phone back? It should even be out. Give the phone back. It should be out. Lucas is taking notes. What is he doing? 
I thought the kids in back were bad. I know. Yeah, it's the front quarter. Is that a quarter? No, no, it's front quarter. Donnie, you okay? Did you get hers? Okay. All right, which of the following would always be true? All triangles have three altitudes. I like that. That's true. The altitude bisects the angle it passes through. No, it doesn't have to. It could. It doesn't have to, though. An altitude divides one side into two congruent segments. That's not always true. It could do that, but it's not always true. The altitudes of a triangle intersect in a point in the interior of the triangle. That doesn't have to be true. Altitudes are perpendicular to the side they intersect. Yes. That's about the only thing that's true. And then they have all three. Cool. Where are we at on these notes? Uh, proof. This is the last one. We should just play this is the last one? Yeah. Just play the last one? That's it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Can we have a boat to play games?